Hello guys, it's Christoph and welcome to another video where I show you a cool trick with expressions in After Effects. I always try to explain every expression in detail, so even though if you know nothing about coding, you should be able to understand what I'm doing. In this tutorial, we will be scripting this piece of responsive animation, as you can see right here. Uh, if we change the text, the background, Im the background rectangle scales with the text and also the position of the icon and the text changes so they always stay in the middle right so let's get into it uh, we, we have our empty composition right here and let's put in some text for example my instagram handle you should definitely uh, give me a follow so let's make it white Let's center the anchor point. Uh, holding control, you can uh, align to the center um, and align to the center. Okay, uh, now we create a rectangle. We can create any rectangle we want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's get some nice color, maybe something like this. Put it behind the text. Um, let's change the text color to black again. Okay. Perfect. So now we are going to create the responsive rectangle. So we go into rectangle, rectangle path and alt click this stopwatch on size. Okay, perfect. So uh, how are we going to do this expression? We need to uh, take the text layer, look at it and get uh, the width of the layer, which After Effects has a, has a function for that. And then we are going to expand the width a bit to get some borders on the sides. Sorry, some margin on the sides. And then we're going to apply it and it will scale with the text. It's that easy. So first we are going to create a variable text layer, which is going to point to, to this uh, text. So we're going to take this snail icon and link it to this layer. Okay, so we see the layer crystal.yazek, um, it's this layer, okay? So we need another variable, uh, which is gonna be the text width. And uh, for this, uh, we are gonna use the pointer to the text layer, this the first one. And this function co called source rect at time, which sources the dimensions of the, um, of the text layer and we only need the width so we're gonna put dot width so now this uh, text width var uh, variable stores uh, information about width of the text layer and now if we go into here so uh, this is how we, you create output and uh, this output is two, dim two dimensional so it has width and height so you're going to create uh, these parentheses and to the first one, we are going to put text width. And to the second one, we're going to put, I don't know, 200. OK, that's for the height. We don't really like scale the height responsibly, so we can uh, put in the number like hard coded in. So now you can see our uh, shape layer wraps the text. Uh, it isn't really accurate because our anchor point is offset a bit, so we need to center the anchor point. And maybe we should have done it before uh, before the... Oops. So let's... Yes. So uh, now it's in the center. We, need, we needed to, uh, to adjust the position because we changed the anchor point, so it kind of offset the position. So now, as you can see, if we change the text, uh, the shape layer changes uh, its size. Okay, perfect. Next thing, we need to uh, add some padding to the side, which is going to be added by uh, adjusting the text width, which is currently only the width of the text layer. And we can add, I don't know, 180, which means 90 pixels on each side. And voila, it uh, expands the, the rectangle to the sides. So it still is responsive. It just adds 90 pixels to each side. We can also round it a bit, so let's add in 50. And now we have uh, our perfect 
rectangle. I don't know why, but it kind of offset it again. So we need to put it in the middle, in the center. And now let's align it uh, like this. Oops. It kind of froze. Yes. So now it's perfectly in the center. Um, so that's all for this tutorial. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're gonna... So you might be happy with it uh, as it is, but we're going to make it and take it uh, one step further with the icon as I showed you in the beginning of the video. So let's copy our icon. Let's remove uh, all animations and also the expression. Uh, okay, so uh, where's our icon? Let's put it in the center. And uh, firstly, let's adjust the scale of the rectangle in the behind. So we are gonna uh, we're gonna create. Um, uh, another variables for uh, for the logos. So logo layer equals uh, link to the logo layer, pointer to the logo layer, logo width uh, width equals uh, logo layer dot source at rec time dot width. Let's remove the uh, the padding from here and add it. Uh, to another variable ca called combined width, which is gonna go. You need to understand that the text width and the logo width are just like number var values. Uh, so, for example, the logo width will be like 30 and the text width will be like 300. I don't know. So, we can just add them up. So, we are gonna go logo layer, sorry, not logo layer, logo width plus text width plus uh, the padding, which is going to be uh, 180, uh, 90 for each side, and uh, 80 for the gap between the logo and the text, OK? And we need to change this for the combined width. So now we have our rectangle set up. And now let's adjust the position of the, of the icon to be also always in front, of the, in front of the text. So let's Alt-click Position. Uh, we have our expression window here again, and we go into uh, text layer. As always, link it to the text layer. Uh, text with uh, text layer dot source at rec time dot width. Easy. You should be able to do this by yourself right now. <laughs> uh, also, if you have a expression error. Uh, with these, uh, with this expression while writing the expression, don't really worry about it. It should be solved one once you finish your expression. So it, it's kind of annoying, but I think it will be fine. Uh, next thing is the logo layer. Uh, uh, no, we don't need logo layer. We just need logo width uh, because uh, we are pointing to this layer. So we are gonna just write this layer <laughs> dot source rect at time dot width. So this layer, uh, this is a, it's like an expression which points to the current layer. So if you have a expression written inside this layer, this layer uh, points to logo layer, right? It's kind of uh, like self-explained. Uh, and uh, we need the text position. Uh, which we're gonna use our pointer text layer dot position. But as you already uh, know, the position is two dimensional value. So we only need the first dimension. And how to get the first dimension is to put parentheses. And uh, in JavaScript, the arrays start from zero. So our first position is actually zero. And the second position is one. If we wanted the uh, uh, Y position, you would go for one, but we want the X position, so it's zero. Okay, and uh, that's all we need. Uh, just now we need to calculate the X position, the final X position, which is going to be text position minus uh, text width divided by two minus our gap, which is 80, 
minus logo width divided by two semicolon at the back. And now also we need to add the output, which is X position and uh, this comp, which takes this composition and we need uh, width, no, sorry, height, height of the composition and divided by two. So this is for the Y, uh, y position. We take the width of the composition and we divide it by two, which gives us the center. So now it's always in the center and it's 80 pixels in front of the, of the text layer. Perfect, easy. Uh, also to explain this part, it's we take the text position. Uh, we, the text position is here. This is like uh, the position we get. We need to uh, take the text width and, uh, and subtract it. So we, we go into here, then we subtract the 80, so we get here, and then we subtract the logo width uh, divided by two, so we go into the center right here. So this is kind of how, how it works, easy. Uh, next, we need to adjust the position of the, of the text, so it's always in the center. Even though it has like this uh, this logo connected to it, which is kind of difficult, but uh, I think uh, you will be able to understand how I did it. So now we uh, don't need text layer; we only need text width, and we are gonna again use the text this layer dot uh, source bracket time uh, width. So as as you probably know, uh, here the this layer. Uh, points to this layer, so it's to the text layer, right? So we don't need to, to create another variable for the text layer. And then the logo. We also, I'm, I'm gonna show you, you don't need to really create the uh, the like half step variable. You can just uh, call the functions directly on the, on, the, on the pointer. So we point to the logo layer and we need we don't need to you know like uh, take this into a single variable and then create variable for the width. We can just source direct the time, call this function onto this uh, expression, and then select width. So we have the text width, the logo width, uh, and now we need uh, to calculate the exposition, which is this comp. Again, we are referring to the composition and taking the width for this time and dividing it by two. So uh, by taking the composition and width, we get the center because we divide it by two. So it gives us the center. So as you can see now, it stays the same. Yes, we need to, sorry, we need to take the output. So expose uh, and this comp height divided by two. So now it stays at the same place because it's in the center. Uh, now we need to uh, add the gap, but we only need to add the like half of the gap, so 40. Uh, we also need to add a half of the logo. So logo width divided by two. And now it's perfectly in the center, right? So if we change this text uh, to something, for example, again, my IG handle, it's, it works uh, as a charm. So uh, if you want to change the, the gap, uh, you really need to like change three values, which might be uh, a little too complicated or you might forgot about something. So let's create a workaround. You search for this slider control, you put it onto a null, and now you create another variable, which is gonna be a slider gap, and it equals uh, the slider control value, not the, not the effect, but the value. And here, instead of 80, we are gonna put in slider gap. Let's copy this and also put it here. Also remember we need to divide it by two and also here. Yes, just like that. And now we are even more responsive because we can, because we can change this value and it automatically scales and changes the gap in all of these three layers. 
So it's even simpler to use this effect well, with parameters. You can put more parameters. For example, you might want to, I don't know, change the uh, change to padding. So you can also rename it. So we'll say padding. Sorry. And well, padding equals um, this padding slider. And here it's going to be instead of 180, it's going to be padding times two. So, uh, oops, something, sorry, padding times two. So if you uh, change this value, you can also animate it. If you click the stopwatch, you can animate it as any other different value. So you can animate, I don't know, the, uh, you know, the padding of the of the rectangle. So you can uh, create a whole bunch of different parameters which you can control in this uh, control now. And you can make like really responsive and programmed uh, expression. I hope you understood a bit of uh, coding and you learned how to code your own expressions and make responsive parametric animations in After Effects. Uh, if you if you did, please consider subscribing because I'm going to release more of these videos and uh, please like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.